Hi, I'm Josh. I'm the next Weezer album. This is Weezer. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I had to do it. You know they have the green owl. <laughs> I'm waiting for Pink, the album. You know what? Out of all the people who have looked at me in the past couple of days and have just been like, have you always been wearing glasses? And I'm just like, well, yeah, but the old ones were broken and expired and... My eyes get, you know what? I kept wearing glasses throughout my Disney binge at the beginning of quarantine. Mm. And then like, for whatever reason, it just got so tough on my eyes, even though my prescription is the exact same as it's always been. I just took them off. And ever since I've just adjusted to, you know what? Like I have a TV in my room. It's not really that bad. And in a movie theater, the screen is like so huge that you can pick up on certain yeah. details. I mean, having these definitely helps well I, I i really do appreciate um we're not going to get to the main topic for a bit so sit tight um uh you know i appreciate um bigger screen tvs now because um even when it comes to something like uhf or lethal weapon or anything i watch when it's highly remastered on blu-ray you can just see little details like i see they're playing Candyland, but before it just looks like a blurry board game um because the DVD remaster wasn't great when i watched it on the big screen i could super tell where the spaces are and what edition i was like this is neat this is neat. That's totally fair. But yeah. yeah, like I, and plus I, I don't wear glasses in my videos for one particular reason. Sometimes there's always that little glare mm -hmm. that shows up and sometimes you can get away with it. Like <clears throat> I was saying before this video, I don't have, I don't always have a funnier best buddy like Brad Jones does in his uh, midnight not screenings. Brad Jones. That's I not, I was. that's not the point. I mean, like in comparison, like oh, yeah, Rob yeah. Walker is technically funnier than Brad Jones just because he's a little more Fair wittier. Enough. But Jones is more outspoken that people tend to focus on that more often. Uh, but Doug Jones <clears throat> does not appreciate Sleepaway Camp. He roasted it, and I am not a big fan. Or is that a different guy? Who's the guy? Doug, Doug Jones is the tall guy who's in every creature feature. Oh, okay. You meant, you meant, oh, you meant oh. to say Brad. Didn't Brad you? Jones, yeah. yeah. Like Sleepaway Camp. It's good for your health. <laughs> It's good for a laugh. hundred um, percent. I mean, we've made a video of just laughing. We can yes, uh, attest, um, I can attest that. That was a that. fun time because Tyler had no clue why I had so much fun liking this movie. But remember, it's M.E.G. Meg. If you have a problem, you can deal with her. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about today, Tyler? I don't fucking know what this oh, point. Are we, are we jumping into the review or are we just talking shit for a bit? Um, you know what, let's just talk shit for a bit, and if it goes on for that long, might as well just make a different uh, video. This is really just a warm-up, because we this haven't seen each other in a few no, weeks. We used no. to, we try our best to do, like, a once-a-week basis where we take time off of work, we just shoot the shit, talk yeah. about a movie, any movie. He's got some very yeah. weird what challenges. What we talking about? Yeah, I got a weird challenge coming up. Um, we did that, doing that, and, um... But it's... Yeah, my, my fun challenges. What are your thoughts on my random challenges? Like, I think you like the Cage Willis Seagal thing the best. That that was funny. And um, <laughs> I was saying to a friend of mine at work, it really is like whose line. The points yeah. do not matter no. whatsoever. I didn't even get track of points. <laughs> no, because it's one of those few games where you're actually glad you're wrong about something. <laughs> I mean, but for fuck's sake. Nicolas Cage, Oscar-winning actor. Bruce Willis, someone who... People seriously think he might have deserved Cage an Oscar rage. nomination for... Seriously, I heard Richard Roper say Bruce Willis should have been nominated for Die Hard, and I'm just like... I agree. Okay. Have I told you how I feel about Die Hard? You have. I am yeah. extremely passionate, and I love Die Hard more than most movies. Um, it just makes me happy. I call it a Christmas movie. Uh, the second one is a New Year's movie, so I can watch them like back-to-back -back in case... Is you it, know... though? Yeah, because it takes place on New Year's Eve at an airport. The third one is Samuel L. Jackson. The fourth one is fun. They drive a car into a helicopter. I they love ran bullets. Die Hard. And then the fifth one is like, we don't talk about that one. It's the other thing I said to that coworker of mine. It's almost as if uh, Bruce Willis wants to make a trilogy with hair and a trilogy without. Oh. Before, way after. Can you make a trilogy with a wig next? Like, but he looks exactly like Gru from Despicable Me, and he has an evil twin brother, and it's all Die Hard based? Because, like, I would watch that. Once. That's... 
I can't even see Bruce Willis doing that as an <laughs> SNL skit. I mean, has I, I I don't think I've seen too many Bruce Willis SNL sketches. I don't I've been watching some more it. SNL um, sketches lately. Um, what SN, What's your favorite SNL cast member off the top here? Like recent memory, <laughs> old memory. Like who's your favorites? Which one make you laugh the most? Because I really like Fred Armiston. Damn. He's he's pretty <clears throat> funny for me. So that is a really tricky one. And like the only current person that I know off the top of my head is Keenan Thompson, just because dude yeah. went from all that, which is the kids SNL yeah. to like the real deal and he's still there. That man literally has done nothing with his life but SNL and I applaud you good sir. Well, we could talk <laughs> about Fat Albert but there's really no point. That was a thing that happened. Yeah, that that was in like the craze where every kids cartoon was being turned into a movie at the exact same time. But like not, Garfield, Fat yeah. Albert. Yeah, Garfield. I um, actually really li- I enjoyed the first Garfield as a kid. I thought Bill Murray was a great cat. See, like I watched. It was fun. Yeah, like I watched it on pay per view <laughs> a lot, and Bill Murray was the only yeah. actor you could have gotten to play Garfield. The animation but. has aged poorly. Yes, and um, um, but as we still holds a special place in my heart. Yes, yeah. and if you ask him about uh, Garfield, you will. Learn the story of how dude was so stupid that he didn't read the entire script. Dude didn't even read the name of the writer. He read Ethan Ethan Cohen Ethan Cohen with an H, and he's just like, "Oh, I love the Cohen brothers. I'm in." <laughs> did he sign on for two, or like how how did that work? I don't know. I I think it was a Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura thing where it's just like if you do this one movie, you have to do the other one. Oh, contract Jim out. Carrey. Yeah has done like two sequels in his life fair enough yeah well in fact he I'm, did he did um he did dumb and dumber 2 yes with two o's and an exclamation mark and ace ventura 2 he wasn't in the mass 2 or the ace ventura young one which is particularly awful have you seen that young ace I ventura saw movie a trailer and that was Ooh. all i needed i watched it on vhs once testing it at the thrift store yeah VHS? i did that for about five minutes Nah, it, it came it out. Bef- it came out after VHS. I don't even understand. Maybe it was DVD. That. I don't know. It was in a VHS DVD combo, so I could have been confused. But yeah, sort of like never, did, Didn't do the mask. He didn't do Evan Almighty. I, I mean, mean, Evan Almighty wasn't that bad of a movie. I had fun with it. Yeah, it was, yeah, it, like, was, it was fine. It was. I think it's aged poorly. But as a I mean, kid, as it's a fun. kid, as a kid, that was my introduction to Steve Carell because I hadn't seen Bruce uh, Almighty yet. But what what is my introduction to Steve Carell? Oh my goodness. Um, probably The Office. My friends like that when it was coming out. That's probably what I was introduced to. Because people talk about The Office and Steve Carell and I maybe saw an episode or two in passing. And they still don't talk. They still don't stop talking about it even though... I don't get it. I'm glad for you guys. Um, yeah, I, like, it, great I, actors. A lot I of had an epiphany love. today. What's I've been that? trying to understand Parks and Rec for the longest time. I finally got why it's funny. I finally got the dry humor. <laughs> And I started laughing, and I'm really enjoying it now. And, and I'm just, very happy. And you can laugh at something else other than that Chris Pratt blooper that is all over YouTube. What is the Chris Pratt blooper? So there's a scene where Amy Poehler and her best friend are addressing all the employees. It's just okay. like, who doesn't love a good comeback story? Like Rocky, Karate Kid, Robert Downey Jr. And then Chris Pratt goes, Kim Kardashian. And they're just like, hmm... And then Chris Pratt says, well, I don't know. In the video, there was a lot of cum on her back. <laughs> a girl, the girl sitting next to him just slaps him on the shoulder and everybody just starts bawling. Like um, Nick Offerman, who is a really hard guy to break, buried his head in his knees. And I just sat there. I'm like, oh my God, you fucking <laughs> broke him. I mean, I watched a bunch of Nick Offerman clips today. And there's something about that character that I finally understand. Because I appreciated Audrey Paz's character, but Nick Offerman, I finally get why he's funny. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's... This... Yeah, because like... I oh, know... and I just... I, the one I think I laughed the hardest at today, he was like, this is a park. I'm in charge of parks. And I'm like, <laughs> I understand. But yeah, yeah, like I'm not really a dry humor or, person. Or uh, uh, Patton Oswald when he's doing the rant on the next Star Wars movie. I've always appreciated that clip. See, I I haven't actually watched Parks and Rec. There are a couple actors that I know from it because one of my Ducktales guys is um, Aubrey Plaza's twin brother, Gene Ralphio or something oh, okay. like that. And um, Kate Micucci's in that in Ducktales. Anyway. Yes, she is, and, and she's, she's phenomenal. She's one of the best. I think one of my favorite. I love I love comedy. You know, I love Weird Al. 
I love My Lonely Island, as you're aware, but I love uh, Garfunkel and Oates. I think they're very funny and strange and 100% dirty, but I laugh very, very hard at the go-kart racing song, Go Look It Up. I'm going to have to after this. Uh, the line is, go... I, just, well, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> because honestly, all I know from Kate Micucci, other than DuckTales, was um, those few Scrubs episodes that she did where she was Ted's girlfriend at the very mm, end of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when Ted shows up in Cougar Town, it turns out she dumped him and left Abed him Abed for... was in Cougar Town. He was in the background from Community. I'm not kidding. Abed... Six seasons and a movie. Dude, I'm not kidding. Abed is in DuckTales too. I know. And I haven't watched it yet. I feel bad. Ser seriously, like, one of the reasons DuckTales is good is that it's not a Disney channel with kids in it. Everybody no. complains about how there are adults playing kids, but, like, these adults are really funny and yeah. really talented. I mean, Abed from Community, so Ben great. Schwartz. I'm not a huge Ben Schwartz guy, but he um, he's starting hmm. to he's starting to grow on me, especially with this season. Ben like, Schwartz is hit and miss for me. Sometimes he's hilarious, and sometimes he's like, "Yeah, can I go now?" That's <laughs> yeah, like, and like as, he, but again, I could say the same for Rashida Jones or Morgan Freeman or any of these people. Yeah, you could have hit and miss performances from any of them, and that's just that's just the projects. It's the script. It's the writing. At the end of the day, it's not them. Yeah, but like the kids in the show, it's just like Abed from Community. Yep. You got Ben Schwartz. I don't know how to say his name. Bobby Moynihan. Most people know him as the panda from We Bear Bears, but he was also yeah, in. Uh, I've heard of that. But he was also on SNL. He's got like giant glasses, a beanie hat, and this huge beard. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to. Oh, speaking of SNL, um, I love the Keenan Thompson sketch. I've been appreciating the Keenan Thompson sketch. What's up with that? Where the guest comes on. They talk for a second, and they go into musical montages and introduce people. It's phenomenal. Fred Armiston See? is in the back playing saxophone, and like they have someone impersonating um, the guy from the B-52s, or so, no, the guy from uh, Fleetwood Mac the entire time, Lindsey Buckingham, and he never plays guitar. It's phenomenal. They got Art Garfunkel and like Morgan Freeman to do this ridiculous sketch. They get no screen time. It's, it's so, so dumb. I love this it. this is personally my favorite, and this is one that I quoted. Um, me and two high school buddies of mine did a Power Rangers review. That was the first okay. time I did a collaboration. Like the, uh, with like Elizabeth Banks recent one. Yeah, where they destroy and, Dunkin' um, Donuts. Where they destroy Krispy Kreme. And Krispy when Kreme. We, and when we get to that point, and we talked about the product placement, at one point it just segued right in. It reminded me of an SNL sketch where. Um, Keenan Thompson is like a police academy trainee and Leslie okay. Jones is teaching everyone about like, um, they have these animatronic like figures played by the other actors and the host. And you're just supposed to determine which person you're, you shoot at like the more oh, friendly one, seen this one or the okay. innocent person, which seems very straightforward. But then Larry David in this neon orange <laughs> suit and tie <laughs> And this ridiculous spike hair wig, almost in a Rod Stewart type of way. He's got the shades Do and everything. Do you think I'm sexy? And he's like, I'm Kevin Roberts, and I know all the best bitches in town. <laughs> and Keenan just shoots him. And he's just like, and Leslie's like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't okay, know. Okay, yo, I think I've seen this one now, because I watched the Larry David and episode, then, I think, on TV. And then he says the second one, which is so fucking quotable. This was what I said in the video when we were talking about Krispy Kreme. He pops up again, because all the animatronics come from behind a wall yeah, yeah. in this very sudden thing. And he goes, I'm Kevin Roberts, and I just want to know, can a bitch get a donut? <laughs> 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 Oh. I lost my fucking mind when I saw that sketch. Oh. My, me and my buddies could not stop laughing for like a good couple minutes. Oh, like the one that I quote often and I'll work it into conversation is Bill Burr and Seth MacFarlane's um, Puppet Therapy. Have you seen this? I have not. And then it's got it's got Keenan Thompson on the end and someone in the middle and Bill Burr on the end and he's a he's a war vet, right? And they're like, and Seth MacFarlane's like, okay, we made a puppet. Let's have fun names for our puppets and give it a backstory. And like Keenan Thompson um, does his thing and he keeps changing his mind and it's very, very funny. But Bill Burr on the end is like, he's like, I was in Vietnam and I saw people die. They're like, well, let's try to lighten it up. Let's do something else. He's like, I like flowers and guns and grenades and my buddy lost his leg. And it's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's so over the top that it 100% works 
Um, that, the, that sounds really fucking good. Bill Burr. Um, not Bill Burr. Sorry, I'm thinking of Bill Hader. Bill Hader, I'm sorry. Bill Hader. Oh, okay. Bill, but Bill, oh, um, okay. just on a side note, Bill Burr's monologue is fucking hilarious. I don't know what people are I upset haven't about. Seen, I haven't um, seen it yet, but like I the stuff that people died of laughter. The stuff that people are complaining him about, I'm just like, oh, well, it's nice. He's been doing that for, and, and the thing is, he's been doing that for years. That's his style of comedy. He 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 does a little bit of shock and he does a little bit of truth and he makes a point on there where you're like, oh, well, we fucked up. Um, you didn't you realize know. you didn't realize most of the people who complain about this stuff are people who have never watched them before. And I know, are never watch and that's them the again, funny right? part. So I'm watching this monologue, and I died of laughter. And the next day, it pops up because you can stream it online there. Yeah. And it pops up, and everyone's up in arms. And I'm like, I thought that was the best SNL monologue in a long time. Like that was that was genuinely funny and truthful. And yeah, that's the best part. I it was... is truthful. You cannot <laughs> complain about him pointing out that you guys can't are smart people but can make really stupid choices in yeah. the face of very emotional times. And I was just like, and I think when Mel, Mel Brooks is like, I can't make comedies anymore because people get upset. Or he says comedy is dead and he, he says yeah, something Todd, on those lines. Yeah, Todd Phillips said the exact same thing when it but came down But I think Joker. if Mel Brooks came back today and made a movie in the vein of Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, Spaceballs, or anything like that, a parody movie of young adult films, oh my goodness. The jokes would be inappropriate and funny. They probably and like be. if he lampooned Hunger Games and Divergent and whoa, Maze Runner whoa, and all those, that, you know, oh those kind of like YA those like movies. Y- okay. YA movies. Maybe even a bit of Fifth Wave in there because that movie deserves a lampoon. Well, I mean, like Taika. What kind of ringtone is that? It's the default. Well, like I mean. People have compared Taika Waititi to Mel Brooks so many times, especially with uh, Jojo Rabbit. 100%. Because, but... like, the princess tagline that they put up on their website in their newspapers was that it's part Wes Anderson, part Mel Brooks, and then Taika Waititi's own thing there. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things where, like, I think we need Mel Brooks' voice. I think we need one last really great Mel Brooks movie. And as movie. many people pointed out when Todd Phillips complained that people were too woke... Jojo Rabbit is out there. Yep. And like, I got this, this really weird video popped up in my timeline when people were like saying, oh, the fuck do you know about it? And it was a woke person saying that you don't need language or sexuality to be funny. And it was a clip from the last Winnie the Pooh movie, which don't get me wrong. They picked the funniest Mm. part in the movie and it was hilarious, but it just felt like an excuse saying that you yourself won comedies to only be like that and yeah i, mean, I got news for you like we all have free will and free choice which means i'll be the andy griffith show yeah which means whatever makes us funny that's what we're yeah. allowed to have you can't dictate this kind of stuff whoever like, put that comment out there i want you to get in a ring and fight sarah silverman she'll kick your ass <laughs> But like wow, if, that's a that's a huge Uva Bowl comparison. Uh, Sarah Silverman is awesome. Yeah, um, I, I and, know, but like the yeah. whole getting into a ring fight that just reminds me of the Uva Bowl boxing matches with his critics. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought that was um, what's his name? Um, Andy Kaufman that did that. No, that was Andy, Andy Kaufman. I can't remember who he fought. He fought somebody. He did. Yeah. But no, I mean, if your comedy is censoring without logic, um, I'm sorry. Um, People have the right to say what they want and do what they want. If you don't like it, don't watch it. That's all I'm saying. I don't like kids' it's... movies. Do I watch a lot of kids' movies? No, because I'm not going to like them. Yeah, They're for kids. Much. If you don't like adult comedies, don't well, watch them. Well, I mean, stay tuned for my uh, Christmas <laughs> series next month. We might have, well, we are going to have one or two. Which Well, um... there's some, I, again, I don't hate everything in every genre. It's like I don't hate every genre of music. There's just... The majority of certain genres are not for me, and that's okay. Yeah. They definitely got an audience, and they make their money, and there's an industry out there, and people work hard on those movies, and I have mad respect for them. Bottom line, just anyone, don't me. Bottom line, anyone who thinks that um, your voices aren't being communicated, I got news for you. Black Christmas got made. Yes. That should be proof that any, that any voice can be heard at this point. I mean, there's a lot of unique voices in film out there. I mean... Um, I think one of the most unique voices in the last couple of years was Crazy Rich Asians. I don't think that's something we've seen on the big screen before in that format. It had been a, it had been an extremely but long it, time. it's it's we get to see the culture. It's different. And did I get it? No. Was it meant for me? No. Did I enjoy it? Yes. 
<laughs> but well, like I didn't you know, watch it. Those I didn't voices. watch it just because it felt like a generic rom com. Like I appreciate the fact that actor that really good actors were yes. getting jobs that they've deserved for a long time. That part mm. I am totally behind. And like one of the movies that I'm looking forward to in 2021 is In the Heights, which pretty much I'm is not familiar with that one. It's the Lin Manuel musical. Oh, okay. In, like He's got Washington. a new one coming out. Yeah, and it's got huh. yeah, it's got Anthony Ramos. It's got um, a couple others like Mark Anthony is in it for a couple oh, minutes okay. apparently, hmm. and it has a couple of the actors from the original Broadway show. I mean, Lin Manuel well, yeah. Lin Manuel probably... was the main character, and now he's like a side guy that shows up. Well, he's probably now. directing this one, I imagine. He is not the director. He's not. The director oh. of Chris Crazy Rich Asians is act- huh. actually directing. That's a nights. good fit for me. But then we've again a lot of unique voices. Um, we've got Olivia Wilde's Booksmart, which is a very unique take on growing up and such, which is slightly different than a lot of other films. Because a lot of other growing up, like they still have the typical cliches in there, but the yeah, way and that, presents that the got story my, that kind of got on my nerves. I, I very much enjoyed that. Or Greta Gerwig's Lady Bird was a was a very nice, and I know you haven't seen that. And then even, even like, I've, Jordan I've Peele's little, take on the horror bit. genre is refreshing with us and Get Out and the new project he's working with the people under the stairs or something. He wants to reboot that. Yeah, he's pretty I'm, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm that super in. I'm super into whatever he wants to do. He's He's got funny. such unique voice and talent and I just want to see that. It's really funny that Jordan Peele is writing and directing original projects and is being very vocal about it. And yet he's... Being a producer for horror remakes. Yeah. I mean, Candyman, uh, People Under the Stairs. I've never seen the original Candyman. Have you seen it? No. Because I don't want to go into the remake until, you know, I've sort of seen the first one, at least, you know? I sort well, of from what have I a under- general idea From what I understand, it's a remake and sequel at the same time, because oh. it covers a survivor. <sighs> Like a baby that survived the uh, original movie. They're all grown up now, and now it's their turn. Well, I just to have to go watch. That. How many Candyman movies are there? There were only like two or three before. Okay, I can so I can catch nothing, up on that. It's not it's like nothing Friday the Thirteenth or Nightmare on Elm Street no, or no. one of those where I, I would go be here for like the rest of my life and Jason will go to Manhattan and then there's space and someone ends up in hell and I don't know. Thankfully, nobody <sighs> went anywhere near there on that one. I mean, I, I never I've heard of Candyman. I know you say his time three times in the mirror and it like pops up and that's literally all I know. That's all I know about Candyman. That's also the only thing. Um, I really know he's got a hook, it. I think. Is that a hook? Is he the hook guy? He ha- he carries around a hook, as far yeah. as I know. Yeah. Because like, well, like I know what he did last summer. That that guy carried a hook too. Yes, yes. Um, I, I watched that film recently. I really sort of had some fun with it. It's it's nineties. It's fun. It's not that bad. It's basically what Chris Stuckman said it was. Oh, you did a review on that. Yeah, huh. we were listening to it on the car ride home that one time. Oh, I probably was paying attention to the road so we don't crash. Oh, yeah, that uh, <laughs> that definitely helps. <laughs> yeah, but man, I, I I I do enjoy a good cheesy. Like I want to check out the Final Destinations. I've never I've never seen those. I've seen clips. I've seen someone get hit by a bus. That's pretty entertaining. Yeah, that's the one um, everybody remembers. I remember that when, one? Because like it, it's a scary movie. Death. In fact, like I'm pretty sure. In fact, I've, Scary Movie I've pretty seen much all puts the, that death yeah, they in do. every movie of theirs. Yes, I've seen all the scary movies. Unfortunately, I marathoned all five of them in a row. Um, I decided one day, because I enjoyed the first and the second, right? You know what? we got to make another video of like reading Rotten Tomatoes comments. Oh, we 100% do. In we, fact, we... where's the remote? <laughs> well, we've got a few minutes, and if anybody is still here after we're All right, talking, uh, pick a movie. Um... We didn't get to the space between us with Asa Butterfeld. That was Ooh. one that I really was hoping we'd read the comments about just because. All right, grab your phone. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. Oh, if my I, goodness. You look up space between us. I'll look up. Um, how about oh. Collateral Beauty? That was Ooh. shit. Ooh. That one. That one is like a metaphor that didn't work out. It was like trying to feed people kids spinach. Well, it was basically Wizard of Oz, just with Will Smith. Okay, so let's just start with the space between us here. 16% on the Rotten Tomatoes meter, 50% score, 54% on the audience score. Why is this being compared to Blue's The Warmest Color? That makes It says, other movies like this are Blue's Warmest Color, Before Sunset, Eternal Shots, Sunshine and Spotless Mind, Her, and Brooklyn. All good movies, people. Why? If you haven't seen these, uh, the only one I haven't seen is Before Sunset, but I understand that's Richard Linklater's pretty good trilogy, but... The rest are phenomenal. Um, Brooklyn, particularly. I 
See, I like the first half of Brooklyn. The second half, I just stopped caring just because she's supposed to be torn between the uh, New York wise guy and Donald Gleason. I don't know what she saw in Donald Gleason. Dude was a blank slate. She saw Ex Machina in him. He was the worst part of Ex Machina, though. <laughs> he was in it, though. Um... Oh, okay. You got, okay. Okay, you start with one. So Okay, so this one is a half star out of five. A half, half star. star. Good, yeah. good. Collateral Beauty sets a record. It is probably the worst movie each of these fine actors will ever do. Absolutely right. Uh, Paul Burns from the Sydney Morning Herald. Oh, okay. What the hell? That was Okay, to be... here's one. This one is one star um, for the space between us. It's K, knife, the rest of knife with the space between it, C. Dear Lord, I can't stand Aza Butterfield. Not only is he a craptastic actor, but he's not only has the one punchable faces in history. There's more. Um, oh, it's long. Oh, boy. Um, oh, in history. Um, granted, he is reading from an Alan Loeb script, a writer whose line do not only work, who work as an ironic comedy. I don't think he scoffed hard enough this year. It goes on. Let's see. This, um... Just like Collateral Broody, everyone involved in this film should be embarrassed, and every copy should be destroyed. Segway. <laughs> Why the fuck are all these audience reviews for Collateral Beauty so fucking high? Four or five stars? Really? Are you guys high when you wrote this? Oh my god. Oh, okay. Felix L. says, The saddest thing about this pitiful objective, objective, not objective, objective, excuse for a movie is how serious it takes itself. Yeah, that, um, that really sums it up. My god, these audience reviews are so good. I can't understand it. Okay. I don't agree with the bad reviews. I enjoyed this movie very much. Four stars out of five. And there's no name on this for some reason. I. Oh, Nathan E. loved this movie. Okay, you, what did you think of The Space Between, Tyler? Fucking All right, it. It so, so Nathan E. says, This movie takes a fresh spin on an overused story by having a perspective of two planets and gives the story more meaning and makes the character development more appealing. The highs, the score does a good job of highlighting the beauty of the shots. Five stars. Nathan E. Okay, finally, okay, this is a two out of five, so it's bad, but not really. Um, Alex X. The writer was just plain lazy and failed to show the depth of all characters and complexity of the whole story of grief. It had so much potential to be a great film, but just collapsed. More like collateral damage. Hmm. That was a very bad Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that you should definitely avoid. I fell asleep trying to watch it five times. It's so boring. I will keep that in mind. Here's one. I want to read two back to back. Instant video communication. This is Simon O. Oh. Instant video communication between Mars and Earth are not possible. Still using gasoline, cars, and bikes in 2044, WTF. Oh, 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 I finally got a long one. Okay, good, do it, do it, Okay, do it. it's from Frame R, one star out of five. Frame R. Hey, Framer. Ha, 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 this is hilarious. Where's the camera, guys? What, this is a real movie, huh? <laughs> Collateral <laughs> Beauty, wow, this movie is... Deeply uncomfortable to watch. Let's put it in terms that this movie can understand. A movie is like a domino stack. Every single thing is dependable on the other. A producer's job is dependable on the director's job. A director's job is dependable on his AD's job, and so on and so forth. If you mess up in the beginning of putting a movie together, it all crumbles and mayhem ensues. Now, this one started out with the weakest script I've seen this year and obviously couldn't get up. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Good. Real the, oh my god. The real question is, whose daughter did they have to kidnap to make this talented cast agree to do this? <laughs> Willow Taking Smith. Five. Willow Smith, that's the answer. This film has one of the year's best casts on paper, including the likes of Will Smith, the versatile Ed Norton, the ever-wonderful Winslet. Did you write this? Uh, question here, side note. They literally had to, like... Almost sue Ed Norton to make the Italian job, but he did this willingly. <laughs> the perfect Dame Helen Mirren, yes. She's wonderful. And Kira, who's one of my favorite modern actresses. Knightley? Yeah. Okay, she's, she's okay, all right. That, that's fine. Kira um, Knightley reminds me of a paper doll. You just put a different dress on her and stick her in a period piece. She has she has her moments. She was getting a She doesn't have method. range. 
Watch A Dangerous Method. She's got range. Oh, then I've seen the wrong movies. Between them, they have 18 Oscar nominations, two wins, and a future nomination for Naomi Harris because she hadn't made Moonlight yet. Mm -hmm. The cast is the only thing that is solid in this picture, but even the respective performances seem meager under such a poor direction. It had no potential from the start, with the nonsensical trailers and posters that could have been made by a wannabe designer in high school. Yeah, that's true. Like, the poster had those, like had those um photoshop pictures where part of their faces have like the cube and the other actors faces are filled in with that cube it's a weird poster trend that's becoming a big thing like suburbicon with matt damon did that where half of his face was like red boxes of other actors faces and suburbicon sucked but it wasn't because of the poster um let's see the premise is utterly absurd, and the plot, the withered performances, lack of even a mediocre technical achievement, the score all point to an end with the dumbest twists I've ever seen. What annoys me the most is that some people in the session where I saw it actually left the theater weeping, which can only happen to a person who either didn't see a lot of movies or is easily moved the emotion is sold so cheap that it's an insult to the drama genre and may i say humanity i'm deaf is a line in this movie it's also an accurate self-description i am laughing so hard this faith w gave it gave the space between us 0 0.5 stars read that faith w oh, okay you can't take good actors and make a really bad movie that made no sense. Of course you can. <laughs> have you have you not heard of Nicolas Cage, Bruce Willis, and Steven Seagal? Hey, we have a video. Check it out. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to find a really bad one, but everyone likes this movie. That that's not good enough. It just oh um that one's not long enough. You sure? Oh, uh, this one. Um, let's read one more comment and wrap this. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, we need to find one more. Oh, oh. Nah. These are horrible. Yeah. What do people see in this? Uh, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why do you like this? I love this movie when it went. Uh, why? Iago, oh. relax. People like this movie. Batman and Robin was the highest grossing movie of 1997. Over That's all I have. I'm done. <laughs> wrap the video. Sh shut up. This is my channel. I'm going to wrap it the way I fucking want it to.